It's OK Football's Champ Chat, where we take a look at everything that's gone on around this game week in the greatest league in the world. And I will not hear anything to besmirch the precious championship. I just hope my team are in it next season. <laughs> 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 the things that are definitely not better than the championship, MLS. Oh, yeah, what yeah, on so earth is that about? So bad. So, so bad. bad. Yeah, you, you can put a Messi on the turd, but it's still a turd at the end of the day. <laughs> also, I d we're talking about the rankings that came out of the, the various leagues. Um, I'm an Italian and a Fiorentina fan, but anyone who thinks that Serie A is the second best football league in the world has clearly never watched it. Since the 90s. Yeah. In the 90s, <laughs> yeah. it was number one. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Now it is bone-grindingly awful. It's so dull. Yeah, it really is. But... I also have my co-host. I've got Beefy. I've got Phil. I've got producer Matt. Um, we can't talk about the Millwall Burnley game because that's on a Sunday and we're recording this Sunday morning down the pub. But we should dive right in with how we kicked off the game week. It was Friday night under the lights at Kenilworth Road. And it was a game that everyone wished hadn't happened. It was Luton Town 1, West Brom 1. Do you remember when Friday night at the Kenny was the peak of football. It was loud, it was intimidating, the games were fantastic, it was a proper punch up. It was just drab and dreadful. It was a snooze fest, wasn't it? It like really that, was. The first half, Sky must have been thinking, oh my <laughs> God. What have we what done? What have we done? And, and actually, it was probably quite good for a lot of fans because largely a lot of football fans that go to the games hate Sky. Um, <laughs> so it was a bit of a sabotage mission because it was such a boring game and uh, I think you have to give credit to West Brom in terms of the fact that the, the goal was clever um, uh, there was a lovely little tidy finish by Madger um, but the reality of it was is that the second half Luton huffed and puffed they they got there was no build up really to the game it was an intervention and Chong, Chong took it up wing and popped it in the far post but other than that it was very much much of a nothingness really and um, yeah the more that happens the more um, Sky are going to be <laughs> sort of a bit dubious about putting on a Friday night game which is probably music to a lot of people's ears well they're, they're about to rejig the the television fixtures so uh, yeah well they're, they're doing the half of the season second half aren't they and I think Luton will be firmly crossed out in red and oh, it's about so. time if, if yeah. you're a Luton fan you're gonna have yeah. a lot of 3 p.m. Saturday kickoffs Finally. second half of the season For the first time in like two years um, but we, we've we been big on West Brom here. I picked them as dark horse. We've talked them up quite a few times, and actually they've been doing quite well, but they were pretty dreadful as well. There's nothing in there that looked like a top six side to me. No, I, I, t I tend to agree. I, I, it was one of those ones where they were very much there for the taking, very much there for the taking. And like I said, they'll, they'll be thinking, well, yes, we got pegged back, but ultimately we've gone away from home. We've, we've taken a point. Um but that's about as good as it gets, really. I, 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 was, I was really disappointed with them. Seven draws in a row for West Brom. No, though, no, it? that was their fifth draw in a row. They'd lost the two before that. Right. So it's mm. seven winless. I, right now, I'd take five draws in a row. Stop the rot. Mm. <coughs> yeah, if you were a Luton fan, seven draws in a row, yep, perfect. Yeah, points on the board yeah. at the end of the day. Right, on to Blackburn, who normally are so good at home. Blackburn nil. Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, too. Um, they, they had to play two teams. You, that, might, that's yeah, why you might want to recap that. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. Sheffield United fans hate you already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Sheffield United have overcome the Oli K curse. Yeah, you put out a video saying Sheffield United are going to win the league and they promptly started losing. Um, they've overcome the curse. They have. Well, Turns we, out the curse lasts about. three weeks. It lasts three weeks. That That's it. You know, I, I, and uh, I think I've been very complimentary about Sunderland as well. <laughs> so I was very complimentary about Sunderland and they <laughs> all talk about their game against yep. QPR. <laughs> <laughs> Who can't score against QPR for Christ's yeah. sake? But for, for those that, um, you know, don't understand my, my early morning ramblings, it was Blackburn nil, Sheffield United 2. What a goal by Burrows, by the way. I just want to st stand at that. As a left-footed yeah. player, when I when I could move. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, was a, I thought that was an absolutely lush strike. And um, I thought Raksaki was causing real issues again. And, and actually, Kiefer Moore had a, had a great game. He got an assist rather than a goal. But he had a couple of towering headers. And um, I don't know. I, 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 I 
I'm basing it off of the highlight reel, so there's always sort of a bit of leeway with um, with opposition fans that have seen the whole game. But I, I just felt like it was another one of those situations where Sheffield United just sort of strolled to victory yeah, in the end. Easy, easy walk. And although Blackburn <laughs> not lost at home, is that right this year? Not until uh, yesterday. No, yeah. not until yesterday. Yeah, they they drew go. their last game. Yeah, so it's a big turning point for, for Blackburn. Didn't Blackburn have zero shots on target during this entire game as well? That's impressive. It's very impressive. I oh, no, not as impressive not as, as, impressive the, as uh, Plymouth. We'll get to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah it could always be worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, th- this game wasn't as one sided as another game that mm. we'll discuss in a little bit. Yeah, fair play, Sheffield United. Uh, I, I think, um, look, we're, they are defensively so sound, as shown by Blackburn, struggling to really carve out too much. And I, I think they are promotion candidates. Ah, they're mm. they're the top one, top two material mm. easily. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, unless you do another video where you talk them up, in which case they'll be outside shot for the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll I'll work my way around the championship. We'll see. We'll see. Right on to Oxford United one Swansea two, and it's uh, a goal shy Swansea actually. Uh, what's happening at Oxford though? Uh, they they've been so good. I, I I actually recorded a video about how they were going to make the playoffs, and, <laughs> right. I, and, I d- okay. <laughs> and I didn't actually release it. Oh, just as well. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, if I even commit it to a hard drive, um, that's it. it. it the still curse gets happens. Out. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, they were they were your dark horse, weren't they, Matt? They were. Yeah. How's, they, how's they that going? Are. No, they still are. I this is. I don't think. I think this is a bump rather than a full on fall down because. They've been doing incredibly well at home. This, I think, is maybe their is it their first loss at home so mm-hmm. far this season. So technically, it's still kind of a fortress there. So I they think c- on another day they could have won it. Yeah, back. Those like fortresses they have four sides though. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like the shittest fortress ever. Yeah. Trio tress. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Clues <laughs> in the name. <laughs> yeah. I think it still shows kind of the tenacity. Obviously, mm. they're two down, and then in the 88th, they still managed to claw one back. And uh, like I said, they could have won it. They're, like Scarlett and Harris up top, they're both dangerous. Um, I think they're they're fantastic. I, I, I really love the way that they play. Um, so, yeah, I think um, th- they'll be absolutely fine. We know that. They'll, they'll be absolutely fine. Um, I just wanted to sort of give a nod out for I know it's, it's a really rare thing to, to, to pick up on. But there was a pre-assist for the first goal. Um, I love that term. Pre-assist. I know, but it was such a <laughs> wonderful through ball. I, thought I had to mention it um, because it just made everything so easy. Um, like, uh, and I know that people that are watching this know that we're Luton fans. It, it reminded me of like League One Luton when it was a case of the ball being played Shitty. through to Jack Stacey, yeah. and then Jack Stacey squaring it, and then there's James Collins. It was, it was that sort of style. It was such a such a wonderful pass. I just wanted to sort of draw attention to that little one. Yeah, well, we, you know, we don't talk up Swansea enough on this mm. pod, and I think Luke Williams is doing an absolutely fantastic job. Like, they're tough to score against. They don't score that much, though. They've got they've got a great centre midfielder in Grimes as well. Their centre back pairing's fantastic yeah, as well. You know, you got Darling and Cabango. Yeah, I think they're brilliant. Yeah. Well, like I say, on on the face of it, they're they're neat and tidy and should be really hard to beat. And they'll get they'll get goals. It's just it's it's one of those sort of um, footballing sort of weirdnesses is that it, it always seems to be that Swansea are the one of those ones that are find it difficult to put the ball in the back of the net and the other one is about the fact that who's the best one season wonder of all time it's me too so yeah. that's that's what I associate Swansea with so uh, yeah they'll be fine they'll be yeah. fine as well Th- that's an Angel Rangel when, when they had like <laughs> yeah. uh, all the Spaniards who were like sort of mediocre yeah, uh, are yeah. they clinical enough to even mount a playoff push though Swansea no. I don't think so no no, no. no. That's a comfortable so mid-table season. Yeah, they'll be absolutely fine in mid-table, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, on to Stoke 2, Derby 1. Cannon got firing again. A little pun. We. Oui. Yeah, we. Oui. It was a penalty, but it was his first goal since he bagged four against Portsmouth. Um, what a game, though. Uh, ben Gibson with uh, yeah. you know, a nice little cushioned header back to <laughs> the I keeper. I love the fact that he was talking, like... 
speaking about um, the keeper sort of being too, too central in his goal when he's literally it flicked off the inside of the post yeah. to go in. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's great, unreal. Great, Could have been stood anyway. You're not stopping yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I, I mean, it, fair play to him. He made up for it. He made up for yeah. it. But they, I think the, the, the thing that Derby fans will um, sort of, in a weird way, they'll, they'll be upset that they didn't manage to hold on to it. But then from Stoke's point of view, you think, well, Nat Phillips shouldn't have even been on the pitch. Uh, it was 1-0 no. and Nat Phillips... That's it was, a red, it was, sure. Yeah, it was, it was second yellow at second the very yellow, least. Yeah. yeah, so um, I think that the, resu- the right result was had with regards to that one. And uh, fair play to Gibson for picking himself up off the, off the floor, so to speak, and, and getting that winner. Yeah, fair play. Right, on to Cardiff 2, Norwich 1. What a comeback... From Cardiff. Well, it last week we had a very nil nil one nil run in the championship. This week we've had the wonder strikes just all over. Oh, Borgia that, science again. Oh, what a goal that was! Imagine Absolute taking a rocket. shot from outside the box. <laughs> yeah. Things he d- he he takes quite a few in there, but they're going in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? well, I like mean that's abs- three in the yeah. last two that Ab- he's done we from outside the box. I don't think we've seen a shot from outside the box at Kenworth Road since oh, Clark. Oh. Away at Man's, uh, yeah. when Man City were down in the FA Cup. Yes, that was uh, the last one at Kenilworth Road. I actually had a thought about that, and uh, someone told me in the, in the comments the last goal Luton scored from outside the box was Mengi. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Against <coughs> it wasn't yeah, at Kenilworth okay. Road, obviously. Mm. I'm going to be even yeah. more impressed by the way. It's <coughs> actually uh, his ninth <coughs> goal in the last eight games. Bloody hell! Wow, he is really fair play. Firing. Yeah. He is absolutely fine. He's, he, I, I said it. I think I said it in the score prediction video. There is no way he's in the championship next year. Whether he's in the Premier League with Norwich or with another team, he's ridiculous. I just, I had Norwich up there in the playoffs, and I, I just don't see it as much now. They're really leaky. It, I find that um, that Borgia Science is a little bit. He's got a bit of Buendia about him. He's sort of like just got that special moment in him that like mm. his, his touch is unreal and I thought that Norwich um, sorry Cardiff did really really well to stop Norwich from going 2-0 up there was some serious serious fight in that back line mm. um, and the fact is that they they scored in like the 88th minute and 94th minute whatever it was the winner was a wonderful wonderful strike um, and I, 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 I always I, I put him in my notes the last time we uh, I, I was on this show and I really like Colwell He's, he's, he's so he's good. He's such a good player. So good. Um, and I know that um, Luton have got them on um, on Wednesday. Um, so it's going to be an interesting game. I'm actually looking forward to seeing him, just to see him in person, to see how how good he is, because he comes across really, really well on the on the highlights and on TV. So yeah, I think he's a top player, and I'm looking forward to seeing him. Yeah, he's played at Kenilworth Road before, uh, although uh, under previous managers he was like a bit part player. But now yeah. he's like really, really just important. Seems clever. And yeah, re- he's yeah, he just he's stands the out. Of that team Probably enough. to do with the fact that he's got like white bleached hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, decent, decent. Looking yeah. forward to it. So it, it's a funny one because we, we all thought Hoff Burrup was finally getting to grips with the championship. Uh, so that's three draws. 1-1 one, one to Stoke, then 2-2 two, two to Preston, then 3-3 three, three against Borough. Fair play, Cardiff. Um Unbeaten in their last six, drawn two of those, scored ten in those six games, conceding just two. <coughs> and they've got a very unconvincing Luton next. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. we'll see if they extend that unbeaten run. Right, on to Hull 1, Portsmouth 1. And uh, all huff and puff from Hull. The house didn't get blown down, though. Uh, well defended by Pompey. 24 interceptions, three blocks, 11 clearances... Considering the players Hull were brought in and how they had Liam Rossinia, who had them on the verge of the playoffs, is Tim Walter doing a terrible job? I don't think he's doing a terrible job. I just think it was a stupid decision to to have him as the manager. Well, it's a stupid decision to sack the manager. They anyway. shouldn't have got rid of Rossinia. No, they, they shouldn't. It was a ridiculous decision. It's an impatient decision. I think. I think he just wanted progress yeah, immediately yep. rather than letting him settle in and, and carry on doing the good work that he was doing um yeah I, I mean I thought I thought that Hull's goal was a decent decent goal it was a good sweeping move um like you say the keepers were, were probably the standouts in this yeah. in this particular match there was a save at the end by the way from Panda the the uh, the Hull keeper was unbelievable and that stopped Pompey from actually oh turning it around to make it a 2-1 <coughs> win they'd, so. they'd have been desperate for the three points I mean <coughs> it it looks pretty grim for Pompey already I just I'm really worried that they're they're done for and we're what for 13 games in. No, there's still so long to go yeah. in the season. Pompey seem to have something about them. 
It's it's tough. Obviously, getting promoted to the pr- to the championship is tough. No no ifs or buts about that. They're still acclimatizing. I yeah, think the ones they're, they're got a that. team I'd love to stay up, and at the minute, I just don't see it happening. Long way to go yet, and yeah. uh, there are yeah, a lot of uh, team. Uh, it's it's tight between well, we you know bottom to you, you know, know. They're, they're a fan base that we haven't upset yet, so maybe I've just done it. <laughs> 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 it's all right as long as it's not the bloke that's like, you know, head to toe tattoos. In there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he'll come looking for you. Uh, like yeah. Definitely don't come looking for us in the brickies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They literally know where we're going to be every Sunday morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> come down the high town with his bell. <laughs> we know he's coming. Bring out <laughs> your beefy. <laughs> Bring out your beefy. <laughs> All right. On to Leeds 3, Plymouth 0. How, uh, Le- Leeds, how is Leeds 12, Plymouth 0. I don't understand this game because uh, I-, I watched the highlights and then I watched... Well, I had a look through FopMob. The stats are insane, aren't they? It was yeah. nuts. Like Mad Plymouth game. literally couldn't get out of their half. 0.00, 0 extra. Yeah, I've, I don't <laughs> think I've ever seen that. It was like <laughs> yeah. a, a team from like tier 15 yeah. players. Yeah. Was it someone in the Premier possession League? possession for Leeds or something like that? It was that. insane, but how was it only 3-0? Like they, they scored three goals in 38 minutes and then just declared. And they didn't yeah, need yeah, to do anything. Like have a little jog around for the... That's mad from Leeds. Like and Leeds fans will be fuming. They're like, why didn't we go for five or six or well seven or and eight? And Plymouth were finally putting a couple of games together, finally getting a bit of momentum, and then bang, it just ends. And it show what it shows you, actually, is the gulf in the championship mm. between those four or five teams at the top, Burnley, um, Sheffield, United. Sheffield United, Leeds, you know, maybe... Uh, well, Sunderland, Sunderland, obviously. Yeah, they include Sunderland. Uh, you've got to include Sunderland. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you you know, what they conceded six goals all year. I mean, you've got to include I Sunderland. I know, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the the gap to the rest is quite big. Mm. The thing is, Le- Leeds, uh, Leeds deserve a lot of credit. And people will say, oh, they've got all the money, this, that, or the other. But the reality of it is, is that they lost Somerville. Yep. They lost Jorginho <coughs> Ruta. <coughs> they lost Archie Gray. Like, they've lost big, big pieces of their particular yep. puzzle uh, over the summer and yet you look at how they played yesterday I mean they've brought Aronson back in he was he was obviously on loan last year and he's been doing very well he was having a bit of a sulk wasn't he that yeah relegated yeah, uh, yeah. but it, and that's the thing if, you, if it, it shows the drive of the player the fact that he thinks he's better than than championship level and like I say he's taken his medicine and he, he's back with them I thought that Dan James the Dan James goal was a great goal but it looked like oh. it was it was a weird one there was no backlift it was like it, it sort of prodded it um, but yeah, it, just it just was flew perfectly in. placed yeah, yeah, it, it was, was absolutely wonderful wonderful goal well, I wonder if the keeper moved a bit too late he took two steps and then went yeah, for the dive and yeah. a but couple more steps and it might have been different because it looked yeah. like it was in the air for a long time yeah but like I say they're, 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 a, they're a stunningly good side and I think that um, I know that Matteo Joseph is typically this sort of striker but we know from back in his Swansea days that Piru can play up top on his own and he, and he did well yesterday as well so like I say it, it was as dominant of a of a result and a performance as y- you can really ask for yesterday it was just like you say they declared there was there was no there was yeah. no danger in it well, I got here in the notes it was attack versus defense 37 clearances from Plymouth and eight blocks absolutely mad yeah, what a mad game very strange game and um, just shows Leeds quality and Plymouth got a long way still to go yeah I think Farker needs to take the handbrake off, though, because this well could come down to it at the <coughs> end of the season where goal difference yeah. is important. It's one of I those ones, it's a bit would. like when we spoke about Sheffield United a couple of weeks ago about the fact that they didn't get out of second gear and they just walked through. And it, mm-hmm. and I think there's a cleverness in that. I think that knowing there's a treble game week coming up leads keeping those those legs fit that yeah what's the point you yeah. know like three nil you'll take plus three goal difference on any game week mm-hmm. and move on to the next i think it's quite sensible really i think that you're seeing at the moment the, the form that leads are in you're seeing the the farker football that was so successful at norwich um so i think that um yeah it's, it's clever management throughout the course of the season i think yeah i think i think they're going up i can't i can't see yeah any other way, really? You, you, you think they're going to bottle? Well, they bottled last year. Yeah, but I don't think you know. You can't back to back bottle, can you? If you lead, you can. Right. No, I, <laughs> I think they'll be <coughs> fine this what, year. The more I watch them, the more I think they're not going to because yeah. the quality is just so high. And they've got so many options yeah. as well. Yeah. 
Right, on to Middlesbrough nil, Coventry 3. And uh, you're welcome, Cobb fans, because Luton Town got your season started. <laughs> now you're on the run. Yeah, now you're on the run. Straight next stop playoffs, choo-choo. Yeah. <laughs> all, all, about, all about that red card, though, this game, wasn't it? Just changed everything. Yeah, well, you know, I think Cov still probably would have won even if Hackney had stayed on the pitch. Yeah, but what did, what did he manage? Two yellows in I d- 30 I tw- minutes or something. Mm. Yeah. Mads, yeah, 22 minutes. 22 minutes, yeah, it's impressive. Absolutely mad. Uh, and Borough, they, they've had some encouraging results. Like They beat Sheffield United, they drew to Norwich when they should have actually won. And yeah, Hayden Hackney, he might blame himself, which, uh, you know, he should. He's a young kid, he's a very talented player. But Kov, they've turned the corner, in my opinion. Did um, you... Um, did you see their goal that was ruled out for offside from the mm. free kick? Mm. It was just like six one-touch passes and mm. then had you right nods it in and yeah. you think, oh, I'd let it stand just on quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, give them the goal, for God's sake. There was a Bristol City goal like that yesterday as well. Was the it? Bristol City Didn't goal was that unbelievable, one. the third goal. So, yeah, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, lots to talk about with yeah. Bristol City. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how Cobb found themselves down at this point no. in the, in We've the said league. We like said it's a false position. We said it from the start of the season that yeah. we, we all fancied them for playoffs and I think that it's one of those ones where they've had an elongated poor start. I don't yeah. think anyone would have expected them to have a poor start to the, to the length that they have but they're, they're a good, good side and I think there are people in that side that have got so much talent. I mean, the first goal yesterday, the header, the whip on that cross, I mean, that is a cross that strikers dream of it was an absolutely wonderful well, cross by Eccles particularly when there's two of you completely unmarked yeah exactly <laughs> that really yeah. is the dream yeah but it was ju- it was just oh, it's the shape on it you know when you it was like football porn it was it was a <laughs> wonderful wonderful cross um and it was yeah I, I, speaking of porn by the way how good is Coventry's away kit now there's no need for censorship it's fine but the co- the, the commentary away kit is um, yeah, absolutely quality. beautiful by the way mm. just a quick nod out to that they're still lovely. with Hummel they're still with Hummel yeah they? and yeah. I think their <coughs> Monzo I think was their sponsor but yeah. it's like black with gold oh it's beautiful yeah. beautiful kit imagine having your you know imagine having your your kit all sorted before the season kicks off that'd be amazing not as good as Wolf from Stowe Towns Oh, yeah, I've got to say, uh, <laughs> some nice threads as well. Admiral still doing the job, you know. I thought, every, every time. I thought Sakamoto was also really good, and so was Haji Rai again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is the fashion pod. We're not talking about football <laughs> anymore. <laughs> or the porn pod. No, 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 <laughs> no we're not porn pod. <laughs> it's, it's good to see Haji Rai making an impact still, because he they benched him for a couple of games. The fans weren't necessarily on his side, but he's quality, and it'll yeah. always show through. Yeah, fair play, Haji Rai. And... Th- as, as Matt was saying, like they got the players. Like Sakamoto, what a player! Oh, quality. Yeah. Um, there, there is some like outstanding Japanese talent there in the is, championship. Yeah. And Hashioka the at League. Luton. <laughs> 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 I think he's quality. Oh Hashi at Blackburn. He's yeah, the there you go. That that Hashi. Yeah. Yeah. Hashi yeah. Oh Hashi. Oh, yeah. Well, let's talk about another Japanese player that made quite the. Splash, you got to hand it to him. <laughs> 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 it's Preston one, Bristol City oh, three. The, the um, guilt all over the guy's <laughs> face as well. <laughs> you, know, you know what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I, I I thought you know how like Japanese fans tidy up uh, stadia after they they be into a, they? a football game yeah oh, awesome so you know at all major tournaments the japanese fans stay back and they they pick up all the trash why hasn't you gone to the ref and and said yeah i punched out the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the goalkeeper's yeah. hand <laughs> <coughs> look you're a professional footballer you play to the whistle it's a referee's job to spot infringements well, it was hard to spot because it was it, really was, it was difficult subtle, yeah yeah really it was really subtle, subtle. and I don't love cheating, but also it's not a player's job to point out refereeing mistakes. It's, it's one of those ones where I think um, in the in the when you take the whole game into consideration, like I, I know that goals change games, but that and that was the first goal, so it would have obviously changed the flow of things. But Preston did really really well to get back into it. They scored an absolutely wonderful free kick um, through Greenwood, which was which was absolutely brilliant. Um, but the r- the reality of it is that Bristol City deserved the deserved the yeah. win. And if anyone hasn't seen the highlights for the third goal, 
as a team goal, it's probably one of the team goals of the season. Um, not necessarily say it's the team goal of the season, but one of, because the way they worked it in from the wing with little one-twos um, and the way it was finished off was was just absolutely wonderful. So I think all in all, as much as people will bemoan the fact that there was that, that blatant handball um, that was... Yeah, it was. It was, it was a, just it was a handball. It was, it was yeah. a handball. Yeah. But the reality of it was that Bristol City deserved three points. Mm. Yeah. No, two teams that were in... Re- ridiculous form going in as well. I think Freddie Woodman had a bad game, which is weird because Woodman's been pretty excellent yeah. so far this season. But, you know, everyone's allowed to have a bad game, which brings us on to our next game. QPR nil, Sunderland nil, and a rare off day for Sunderland and Joe Bellingham, but it was a red. <laughs> yeah, the, it was the, a the red. The little skill he did before the red was mm. pretty tidy. Uh, I did he can have no complaints. No, no that of was a not. stupid tackle. There was a couple of pi- there was a couple of um, accounts on on Twitter like X last night that were saying, "Oh, was it a red card?" And like, when is yeah. a red a red card? It's this. This, this yeah. was a red card. If, if you were going to do <laughs> like one of those instructional videos for referees, when yeah. when to give a red card? This. Yeah. yeah How quickly can you go yeah. to your pocket? That's <laughs> yeah, a red yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. Be gone. Yeah, it would be Liam Walsh. And <laughs> 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 what not to do? Yeah. That was. It was so red. It was crazy. And it's yeah. Funny because in the prediction videos I do with Ryman, I I, I had Sunderland as the lock of the week, mm. <laughs> and then they promptly so you ruined that performance. Yep. Yeah, I mean, but you would have you would have put big money on Sunderland before against QPR. QPR having yeah. an absolutely dreadful season, um, that's what you'd pick. And yeah, without doubt. You know, you thought QPR wouldn't have been able to live with Sunderland. R- Mundell didn't turn up. Um, uh, Chris Rigg, I think he was out of the game. He had chest pains uh, oh. before oh. the. I know, right? I was very surprised to hear it as well. Like, I hope he's all right. Uh, maybe it was just indigestion. Uh, who knows? <laughs> 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 but uh, I hope it's nothing serious. But yeah. it's crazy how they lost like a lot of attacking impetus because obviously yeah. a lot goes through Chris Rigg. Mm. Um, and they had chances to win it. The, their striker yeah. was through one on one, and he put it a couple of yards wide. And and just um, Sun- Sunderland uh, in a rich vein, and to have someone sent off and still happily pick up a point without much bother. Oh, yeah, that's impressive. Wha- and what have they scored? Twenty five this year. Yeah, not conceded many. Yeah, yeah. They're not they, worry they too look much. quality. They they are. Do when can this be like a turning point uh, for QPR? Do you reckon? No, no. I think QPR looking really rough, and I think. QPR Portsmouth definitely going to be down there at the end of the year, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we're <laughs> ma- <laughs> yeah, we're ma- maybe and, and Luton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I'll do, I'll do a video about like who's going down, maybe in the in the next couple of weeks. Um, hopefully, Luton start pulling away from it, so uh, I don't need to include us. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. And the final game, um, I, I, I'm going to go now and let you guys <laughs> talk about this one. <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday 2, Watford 6. Like, come Sheffield Wednesday. What are you doing, mate? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I, I saw someone describe it as like a very even first half and then it looked like Danny Roll had given the defence 10 pints each for the second half. How do you let... Vacuun Bio, I know we're meant to be impartial. How do you let Vacuun Bio score four goals? The man is terrible. I don't think they let. I don't think they let him. I think he just did. He was absolutely clinical. Or yeah. Was it two penalties? Yeah, just brilliant. I don't think he, I think it was two penalties for Watford. He scored one of those. Yeah, uh, but it, it, I think that you but have just to give him two penalties in a game. Yeah, uh, the first one was like a diving <laughs> and ball as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most blatant the penalty, Superman yeah. style. Yeah. So yeah, two pens in six minutes. That's that's yeah. not yeah. good play. And the thing is, Wednesday know that it was poor because they were walking out of the stadium. Yeah, yeah. When, it, when the ball hit the back of the net for the fourth, that's it. Sixty-seven minutes. I we're think off. it was. They were off. <laughs> don't blame so, yeah. a long way. Th- th- this is a Watford that have been abject on the road they and have, then they yeah. go and smash six, six. past Sheffield Wednesday yep. who have yeah. actually looked pretty decent mm. I mean the the, the, the bio third the hat trick goal was I mean, have to the, give the props yeah, it was, it was a great great lob and and I thought that um, check for Tadzi Yes, I said it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Check for Tadzi. I thought that he was just pulling all the strings. I thought that he was very, very good. Um, and it's like it's like I said, we, we, we were fortunate enough to sort of see them uh, a, f- a few weeks ago and, and, and we turned them over. But 
Um, I think that's what was so weird is that they have been abject away from home, and all of a sudden it was just like they, they just turned flicked up. a switch and yeah. they just turned up and everything, everything pulled off. Um, so um, yeah, it's one of those ones where you just have to sort of say fair play, and Wednesday need to go and lick their wounds and say sorry to the rest of the <laughs> of the uh, of the of the uh, Luton and Wednesday uh, fan base. It is absolutely awful. My cousin's a Watford fan. It's insufferable. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> fucking insufferable. He, he is. And uh, as as my grandpa would always say, Tom Cleverly. Well, he didn't say this about Tom Cleverly. He used <laughs> to say this about my cousin, Tom Cleverly. If he fell into the sewer, he'd come out with a pack of chocolate fingers. <laughs> what a jammy boy! <laughs> I know we're going to be impartial, but I cannot stand that Watford have scored six goals. Hopefully, they got it all out of the way in one game, and then yeah. score again. <laughs> That's for a all, few. all your goals. <laughs> I backed them to like make a push with the playoffs and when I updated the season. Yeah, they're, um, they're going to be up there, I think, unfortunately. Oh, it does feel that way. Sickening. What a horrible way to finish the mm. show. <laughs> <laughs> Who impressed you this week? Let us know in the comments. Uh, just don't mention what. <laughs> I was going to say, it's going to be hundreds <laughs> of what <Watford laughs> <ones>, Just to <laughs> say. <laughs> yeah, who was your standout player and why wasn't it Vacuum Bio? <laughs> You can mention anyone else, just not Vacuum Bio. Um, <laughs> although we're doing championship content, we are all Luton, fan, uh, Luton Town fans, so please consider our feelings when you comment <laughs> on this video. Um, right. But wherever you are in the UK, come on down to the Bricklayers Arms. They're our host, and it's the best pub in Luton. I'm not just saying that because we're sitting here on a Sunday morning. Genuinely, the selection of beer is fantastic. Uh, and you'll meet BC as well. You can chat football, buy him a couple of beers and just watch him keep knocking them back. <laughs> I won't talk to you. <laughs> I'll just sit silently and drink. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. And also, wherever you are in the UK, if you collect vinyl, check out the record shop in Amersham. Vinyl, CDs, guitars. They have a little picture of, of us guys and Ryman, who's not here today, and just point to that and say, hey, I listen to them. Give me a discount, but be nice about it. Uh, and don't complain to us in the comments about that <laughs> either. Uh, that's You're happened. never letting that go, are you? No, no, no. no I one, don't, week, I one week that happened. I don't know why that person decided to let us know in the comments. What are we, customer service for, for the record shop? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> be <laughs> quiet like, and be gone. <laughs> I went in, I asked for the discount. I didn't get it. It's like, well, why? He rudely asked for the discount, I've been told. Yeah. So, he can, so, so he can get in the bin. Goodbye. Get Don't want your custom. Uh, <laughs> and also a big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification, for making sure that we sound great. But let's have a big week. It's double game week time, so hopefully you all watch this before you know, you've all lost interest in game week 13 and move on to game week 14. There's always time for game week 13. So... Whoever you are and whoever you support, have a great week.